Hello everyone, welcome to our Tuesday Q&A. Uh, my name is Eric Griffin, president of ITM Trading, and with me I have Lynette Zhang, our chief market analyst. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we basically do, uh, we take questions from our YouTube audience, uh, and I get them via email or uh, Facebook, Twitter, or on our YouTube comments section, and I ask them to her live, so that uh, we get a real response, you know, on, on the spot, put you on the spot. I like to be put on the spot, so that's fine with me. All right, perfect. I'm good. <clears throat> well, I suppose if you didn't, we probably wouldn't, we probably wouldn't do this, right? <laughs> probably not. All right. So, Walter A. Okay. Asks, when a country experiences hyperinflation and the cost of goods soar, what happens to wages for those still employed? Do wages rise with hyperinflation or does everyone just lose their job and fall into abject poverty until some sort of stability is regained? Well, it's kind of a combination, but <coughs> typically, uh, just like we mandate the minimum wage, that's what happens. As the uh, hyperinflation kicks into gear, then governments mandate a higher and higher and higher minimum wage, though there certainly is a lot of job loss. The trouble is, is that that minimum wage or that wage mandate never keeps up with the hyperinflation because it's always based on official numbers, which are still constantly changing. Mm -hmm. So, and that's also what happens with interest rates on variable rate debt. It ne you're never going to catch up to it. Even if your wages are, your payments are more and more and more, you never get out of debt. So that's what happens to wages and variable rate debt during hyperinflation. All right, so 11 above okay. asks, it's been stated that the f if the Fed raises interest rates 1%, the US government will not be able to pay the interest on its debt and will default. Is this true? Also, to whom does the government make this payment? Well, uh, I'll answer the second question first because the payments are made to whoever the bondholders are. And remember, bonds and bills, notes are all debt instruments. And, you know, I always think it's kind of interesting when anybody asks me about the interest that they pay on that debt because we've been basically running with just a little accounting uh, maneuver glitch during the 90s, but we've been running perpetual deficits since the central banks took over after 71. And here's the thing about that. If you're running a deficit, that means that you're not paying all of your principal. And you're also likely not paying all of your interest. So I did a study, oh, I think it was maybe 2009 or 10 or something like that because the deficit at that time was a trillion dollars and most of that was accumulated during the crisis. And I said to myself, well, if we're only running, and I only, a trillion dollars behind at that time, why are we servicing, I think it was 13 trillion in debts, right? So I dug into the numbers because you can get that on the um, FRED website, you can get all the database underneath there. And so what's really happening is compounding interest. They're not paying all the interest, let alone any of the principal, okay? So when somebody asks me about the interest, at that time, 77% of the debt that we were servicing was compounding interest. Right. Mm. So the way they always spell it is or, or present it that hides that is this is how much interest per year. The reality is, is we cannot pay the interest. We haven't been able to pay the interest. It's been compounding steadily and with the tax plan, which is not done yet. But they're and, and this, too, is a joke to me because they're saying it's going to add a trillion over the next decade. Well, whatever the cost of whatever program they choose to fund, we're not paying any of the principal and we're not paying any of the interest. So the reality is, is it costs that plus all of that compounding interest. So interest rates going up uh, a percent, a half a percent, 
it's, it's really all of the debt that is currently rolling over. And there's a tremendous amount of global debt that's rolling over in 2018, 2019. No, we can't pay it. No. Even if it stays where it is, we're not really paying it. So that's my answer to that one. That, that, that to me is just a... It's not really a joke because it's really actually disgusting. I remember Jim Rickard saying, I think it was in 2012, no amount at that point in 2012, he said no amount of taxation and or growth exactly. will ever repay this debt. They can only inflate it away. Right. And that's what the hyperinflation is about. That's what the reset is about. That's the whole reason for the reset. And I remember that article from him now that you bring it up too. Yeah, he yeah. was right. He was right then, he's right now. Uh, okay, so Patricia K. It seems to me that the physical and paper metals markets will need to separate in order to achieve accurate physical precious metals prices. I understand that metals prices will reflect reality when global markets reset, but since paper precious metals contracts are created out of thin air, it seems they will have to be eliminated or separated in order to get accurate pricing. Um, and, and, okay, there's a couple things to that. Number one, yes, that's absolutely accurate, and we can see that already. Actually, I think that goes back to 2011. This is off the top of my head, but I've shown this chart before where we've seen the um, price in the physical only market, so that ultra rarities market that is definitely physical only, move up as they started to whack the spot price. So that's already happening in physical, in some of the physical only um, to the paper markets. Where it would really also likely happen is in the, uh, if, if enough, you know, two contracts, I mean, they don't have the gold for delivery or the silver for delivery on the silver contracts either. So if, <clears throat> if a couple of people actually demand delivery on those contracts, what they've done so far is they've just papered them over by paying a premium to keep them in the paper markets. But if that was a real push, then that would make it very obvious to everybody. And probably, they would probably still, they would definitely still try to attempt to, um, to uh, paper over it just by paying premiums. But that's what would force that visibility mm -hmm. um, specifically before the reset. Though it does not mean that that wouldn't happen because in 2008, we saw the premiums, even just on your monetary goal, the Eagles, Maple Leafs, all of that, that premium exploded, mm -hmm. even though the spot market was dumping. Right. So it's, it's kind of nuanced. If you're just counting on watching TV or the computer for the spot price, you would not see it. Right. Because as demand for physical rises, that's what puts the pressures on the premiums and creates that gap. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, we saw it in uh, Junk Silver. Was it about we two, just three, saw it was three years ago-ish, wasn't it? I want to say it was like 2014 when we saw that squeeze on fit on the yeah. on the pre 1965 dimes and quarters because you know they, they don't mint them anymore availability right. so the premiums jumped to like on the wholesale market was like four dollars and fifty cents I think yeah and so did like Silver Eagles and other products right. too but and weren't they also paying a premium at that time to buy them oh yeah the wholesalers so you know but oh yeah but they were back ordered three months on some on some instances right. So, which means they're willing to pay more. So in a physical market, you have those limitations. So you wouldn't see it unless you're tracking the right. physical market. <clears throat> All right. So uh, Michael B. used your tagline. He said, did? You say, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. Yes, that is my tagline but for sure. But if there is a confiscation, mm -hmm. do you hide it and lie about it? Not sure if that will work. Can they search your home? Will they go in your backyard? How bad can it get? Well, in India, yes, they went in and they searched their homes, but people there are more attuned to holding their wealth and passing that wealth down via gold and very much gold jewelry. In this country, I don't even think 1% of the population yeah. has gold. So I don't think they're going to come banging on your door. 
Um, my personal preference is to hold it in a way that the those that write the rules or have the ability to influence those that write the rules hold it. That's why I personally feel a whole lot more comfortable with the collectibles because, you know, and there would be a black market in there too. So I'm not saying that For there would... For bullion stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. But you're not going to get actual real value if you're going through the black market because there's a lot more risk involved. And for me... Um, and, and also for, for my clients, what we're actually doing is executing a strategy through the trend cycle, which means that I want to have the ability to actually convert my gold into other assets, income producing assets, when they are severely undervalued. Right now they're all severely overvalued. But in the reset, in the course of this process, all of that fiat money inflation in, with regards to gold gets burnt or in relation to gold gets burned off. So my preference is to hold it in the way that enables me to um, expand my wealth base when that timing is right. And not in terms of fiat dollars, mm -hmm. but in terms of actual real uh, physical, tangible assets and wealth. Okay. Okay. So, let's see here. Okay, so I have a couple pieces on this one here. So, David H., does ITM consider any cryptocurrencies as suitable cautious speculation, or are you advocating against all cryptos in favor of gold and silver? I'm going to let you answer that one. You're going to let me answer it? I'm going to let you answer that one. Okay. Um, well, it's, it's, I'm, I'm glad somebody asked this and part of the reason why I put it on here is because I want us to clarify, you know, our position on that. Right. right. So, um, cause I, if you read the comments, if you read the comments, a lot of times people think that we're just anti crypto. In fact, here, I'll read this comment. This one I'll answer, but you go ahead. Well, so this is a comment that obviously right. is kind of in line with that. Right. Exactly. So, so it says, so, so there you said it, it's going to happen. The switch to cryptos. So why the hell not get in early? It's called foresight and see it coming. Imagine if you suggested at the beginning of the year to buy Bitcoin or Litecoin. Talk about outshining the metals. Percentages in the thousands. Furthermore, regarding the they who are making Bitcoin futures contracts. So, you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of um, caps locked and, you know, uh, exclamation points in here saying like, oh, we're not, we're saying, you know, oh, cryptos are bad. But... That's actually I mean, like, not what we're saying. Yeah, I own some. I own some. Um, and some of our, our staff members own some. The, but what we're always trying to do here and what Lynette's really good at is just bringing to light what really is going on in the economies and the markets. And the fact of the matter is, is that we very strongly believe that not, not Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ethereum will be the cryptocurrency of the future, but that the central banks will roll out their own cryptocurrencies right, right. to have, make us go digital, go cashless, and then they can drop the ne drop negative interest rates on us whenever they want to, erode the principle, forcing you to spend and create the inflation that they need in the crazy markets. So that's what she's been uncovering now for the past, I mean, specifically mm -hmm. since IMF went with their cashless society oh, whole yeah. deal, right? Oh, yeah, I've been and talking about that's, that for years. It's just, that's what we've been noticing more and more. You've been noticing more and more is that cryptos, uh, that the central banks are going to roll out their own cryptos. We strongly believe that. So we're not ever saying don't own it. We say 100% of the time, and we've been saying this for 22 years, is that you should always, always, always backstop every investment that you have with physical gold and silver in your portfolio. It's the ultimate wealth insurance. It's going to protect you when anything else fails. We don't know when. When's the stock market going to crash? We don't know. Is Bitcoin going to crash eventually? But when? We don't know. But if you have physical precious metals in your portfolio, it's the ultimate um, hedge. Hedge, exactly. Right. It's the ultimate hedge, and that's what we're saying. Is that we believe you should always have that in your portfolio because once you do, you don't have to worry about any everything else, right? Because you've got the insurance in place. If you have health insurance, you're not going to freak out 
if you have to go to the hospital to get some procedure done, right? Because you know you've got that backstop. If you have car insurance, you're not going to be freaking out as much about you know the possibility of an accident because with your you know thirty thousand dollar car lo losing all of its value in an accident because you've got your insurance. It's the same thing with gold and silver. Have the physical gold and silver. Put it in place today so that you can do whatever else you want and and have that peace of mind. That's what gold and silver will do for you. Okay. Now it's my turn, and and that's why I wanted him to answer it because he does have some some uh, cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, yeah. whatever, and I've done well, and I've done well with them. But right. you better believe, in terms of fiat, you better believe that I have physical gold and silver to back all that up, so that in the event when that reset happens or the next crash or crisis happens, I've got that wealth insurance to protect me. Right now, he is um, Eric has a little different mentality because he's using it as a trade, right? The cryptos, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Okay. I meaning and meaning by trade like uh, you intend to sell it. It's eventually not a let it go up, let it go up and sell it. And right, make money you're, on you're it. Right. you make fiat money on yeah. it. Okay, uh -huh. and and I'll tell you, you know, it 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 took me even with how much research and and how how buried in this whole thing I've been, you know, really since I was ten on some <laughs> level. Um, it still took me a while to make that paradigm shift uh, fully to the way I view fiat money and these markets, even with my background, even with all of the research. But I absolutely have, and there's really no doubt in my mind, but that we're actually living through right now is a money standard shift. Mm -hmm. And this is the tool that they're using to get us to go in that direction. And I absolutely believe, because this is where where my personal integrity comes in, I'm not saying you don't have it, you know, but for me, I'm not saying <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I got right? It. I got it. But what I am saying is we vote with our purse. So because I am really 100% certain, and you know, and anybody that's known me for a really long period of time know that I don't really go to 100%. I always like to give myself some wiggle room, but you know, I am 100% certain that they want everything in the digital space, so I'm not cooperating with them. And we need a lot of people to not cooperate with them and also to let them know by not cooperating that we understand what that end game is. Because it's not okay with me. I'm not so worried about me. I'm I'm 63. You know, I'll, I figure I'll be around for another 30 years, but I'm still at the last third of my life. I'm more concerned about my children and my grandchildren. So me not buying the cryptocurrencies as a trade, because that's all it'll be. Remember, they're Excuse going me. to need you and definitely want you to go into and accept their crypto coin. Mm-hmm. So these markets must implode and everybody must be scared enough to accept what they want us to accept. And even, dare I say it, embrace it, which is what's happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got Bitcoin that is now the market cap is greater than a whole bunch of countries. Okay, what does Bitcoin do? Is it a currency? Are you going to spend it? Are you going to spend it? Don't have any plans to. I'm just holding it while it goes up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And let it go up more. Mm -hmm. Now they are legitimizing it through these contracts, right? And now they're making all of these, they're starting to make all these products, these ETNs. And and no, you can, well, you've been able to hold Bitcoin in well, your IRA. You better believe but, the bankers and the, and the financial guys are going to bring in products to make of, money off of it, of right? Of totally. they are. Totally. Out of a mathematical formula using up a ton of energy and I well will you've do even said it that. before though too is that you believe that blockchain has some great elements oh, to it. Oh absolutely. Right? That there's some great I mean the block the blockchain absolutely. technology has the ability to do some really phenomenal things. It's just 
It also has as the, the ability to do some sinister things. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. And that's what I'm warning about. And you see, if we all just go in line with it, then we're going to get those sinister things. Mm -hmm. If we give them some pushback, hey, we're watching. We understand what you're trying to do. Okay over here, not okay over here. Mm -hmm. So we have to make a stand. I have to make a stand because I have to look at myself in the mirror. You know, it's the same reason why you won't see me coloring my hair. This is real, mm -hmm. okay? The, my feelings about it, my understanding about what they're trying to do is real. And I'm only one person, so I can't make a difference. But this community can. That's why I use a lot more cash these days. And that's why I personally... You know, I mean, you guys have seen what I buy. I buy rare collectibles. That's what I buy. And oh, by the way. Well, and I do too. Yes. Yes. I, yes, I know you do. I know you do. I just but diversify just the, the across people that have gotten rid of gold and things. silver to buy Bitcoin. Are you crazy? That's a, all of a sudden you have no access to it and there's nothing you can do. Well, Talk if, about confiscation. If they have, it, it depends on how much you have. And ultimately, all right. It depends on how much gold and silver you have, what you have. I mean, if you oh, and I'm not if you have a you ton of it and you, and you liquid, well, I don't want people to think that we're uh, bagging on them for selling gold and silver to buy cryptos. If you know, it just well, depends you on what your enough. overall portfolio, yeah. right? Okay. Yes. I mean, if you're a hundred percent invested I, I in gold and silver, I know. I, I mean, I get. If you're a hundred percent invested in gold and silver. You save, sell some to get some cryptos because you want to speculate on it. Then, hey. And it's not what I would choose to do. I know it's not. Yes, okay. I know. And I'm sure I'm going to get lots of negative comments because I... <laughs> no, well, you shouldn't because there's really, you know, I mean, look at anybody, you know, there's people that have money in the stock market. I don't have any money in the stock market. I understand what it is, right? And I'd always rather be two years too early, 10 years too early. I don't really care. I am a strategist. I am crystal clear on the way they make that money standards shift. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why I am in process of writing a book. That's exactly what the book is about, how they do it so that we can see it. And, you know, it's just the way that I am choosing, like all these webinars too. Yeah. This is how I make my stand. And the digital cryptocurrency thing is adding an element to it that we, it was, you know, probably couldn't have predicted five years ago that it, that it was going to go in this direction, but wow. But wow, it's and it's speeding up. It is oh interesting. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm personally, um, on some levels, as scary as this might be to many people, I am so thrilled to be living through this period of time. I mean, this is historic. Mm -hmm. You know, in 71, I didn't understand that that's what I was living through, was a money standard shift. I wish I knew, mm -hmm. right? But I do know it today. And I'm getting goosebumps, but, you know, even when I, you know, it didn't even, I that didn't even dawn on me until one day when I was writing and I, and I wrote down, if you were alive like I was in 1971, and it was kind of like when I wrote that and I went, wow, because then I started seeing things that happened. I was like late teens, you know, 17, 18, you know, in there. Um, and I started seeing that and it really, it, it has had a big influence on a lot of things. It's helped me understand a lot of things. So that's why I really wanted to. Yeah. You pulled that one. one of right. I pulled that specifically, you know, um, because I think we need to talk about these things and people have a right to know why am I not participating in it? And yeah. that's why. Yeah. So. Uh, we've been going for about 25 minutes, according to Carl. So we're going to, um, we, there's a bunch of questions and I will definitely review them for the next week's Q and a. Um, but if, if you guys have any questions or interest in investing in precious metals, physical gold and silver, give us a call. We'd be happy. You know, our, uh, our team will be happy to talk through your specific goals and objectives and uh, get you set up with a portfolio that makes sense for you. Okay, um, so and that's I'm it. Seeing some good questions. I'm sorry we went so long on that, but it was something we had to address. Yeah, agreed. So yeah. we'll I'll get these I'll get these ready for you for next week. Okay. So um, that's it for today then.
Awesome. And uh, I want to remind everybody or let everybody know, and I'm super excited about this. I will be doing an insider trading tomorrow and um, we're going to look at what happened with or what's been happening lately with both gold and silver um, as well as some other interesting things. But I am super excited to tell you that tomorrow in Arizona time, are we Pacific? No, we're mountain right now. We're mountain right now. Uh, that I'm going to be having coffee with Greg Manorino. And uh, we're going to be talking about pattern shifts. And I don't know what else because we're just going to have a conversation and talk. But, you know, he is very much of a trader. So I definitely want to talk to him. You didn't mention the time. We said it was Arizona time. 3.30. So 3.30 Arizona time, which is 2.30 Pacific and 5.30 Eastern, right, Carl? Yes. I got that right? I think that's right. Okay. And we'll, we'll post everything on uh, social media, but just tune into the YouTube channel and you'll, and you'll get to hear our coffee chat. And I'm really excited. And live questions And live questions at the end. At the end. Oh, yeah. Don't forget that that's one. That's the reason why you'd want to tune in live if you want to ask any questions. Otherwise, obviously, it'll be on our YouTube channel. You can view it later if you, if you miss it. Right, but it should be a good discussion and your opportunity to ask us both questions. Cool. So I guess that's that's it. That's it. Okay. Well, then like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. If you like this, give us a thumbs up. Remember to share with your family and friends and everybody that you love and care about. And of course, give us a call. 888-696-4653. And you guys be safe out there. Bye-bye.